Newcastle United means everything to the people of this city. They say that everyone in Newcastle supports the team. They do. It's all anybody talks about. It's something that my granddad passed on to my dad and my dad's passed on to me and my brothers and I think a lot of families are the same. The one club, one city thing cannot be underestimated. It's so unique. Our football club's sort of wrapped up with the city's identity. There is a generation of supporters who has never seen their club at the top. Before you used to say, oh yeah, I support Newcastle, and people were like, oh, sorry about that. So much has changed in two years. You look at St James's Park on a match day, it's a different place now. The whole city's together, the whole city's buzzing. When you're not winning, it's not a fun place to be, but right now, it is the best place to be. The city revolves around football and it's on a high when we win and when we're doing well but when it was toxic it, the city felt it and the people around the city felt it. What do we want? Ashley out! No! Literally in the make Ashley days it was a struggle coming here, it really was. You came here just for the kind of Saturday to see your mates, to, to, to go out and you know, that stuff. It wasn't so much about the football because the football was grim, it was bleak. The atmosphere was dull. It was miserable being a Newcastle fan, it really was. I was born in 1995, so I didn't ever really get to see the entertainers era. All I really remember was just toxicity and negativity and, you know, two relegations. And that was my experience as a match going fan. I got my season ticket when we got promoted with Rafa Benitez. I feel like that was a moment of hope that quickly fizzled out. Benitez left as manager. The club, the following season, had to give away 10,000 part season tickets for nothing. I mean, that's 10,000 very sad stories of people giving up their birthright or finding something that was better to do. People have just longed to have something to believe in and for the club to give them an investment back. I think most Newcastle fans felt that they didn't really see a future or a way out. And I think that was the Nadir. And then the ownership changed. Deal done. Finally, Newcastle have got new owners. They've been sold today to a consortium backed by Saudi Arabia's Public Investment Fund. They announced it over the radio that it was happening the takeover had gone through. I raced home, got in the house, grabbed some cans, ran back up to St James's Park and joined the party. People were just desperate for uplift. People were desperate for something to believe in. What you saw on the 7th of October 2021 was that outpouring of emotion and that release that an owner that they didn't want had finally sold the club. It's a new era. It's going to take time, but we're going to get there. So we're very excited for the club and for the fans. We know for a lot of people that there is a really controversial edge to the ownership at Newcastle United and to the takeover deal itself. Well, they are majority owned by the Saudi Arabian Public Investment Fund, and then the other 20% is divided equally between Amanda Stavely and her company, and then the Rubin family, who are property developers and, and already had an interest in the city. We want to invest in the community, uh, in the academy, in the infrastructure. We obviously want to see trophies. Some say it's an example of sports washing by Saudi Arabia, is it? No, not at all. There seems to be a bit of a debate about what the term sports washing actually means. I think it's most commonly understood to be when a regime such as Saudi Arabia um, invests in sport and tries to encourage people to think of their sporting success rather than the human rights abuses they commit. I feel it has been the right thing to do to walk away. I didn't want to be a propaganda tool for Saudi Arabia, no matter how small that role is. If that's what I'm spending my spare time doing, I, I would rather not do it. I'm sure, like a lot of Newcastle fans, I, I'm conflicted by it. I was back then. Saudi does business in, in all other areas in our society. We welcome that money, we welcome that investment. And if we're arguing that football should be different from that, I've got total sympathy for that. I believe in fan ownership. I'm not sure how we get from here to there, however. There are reminders at Newcastle United regularly about the club's links to Saudi Arabia, whether it's the white and green third kit that they had last season. This season's away kit is green. So those are colours that have been used and are used by Saudi Arabia's national teams. If we're so proud of the region, why aren't we objecting to this? We want to represent Newcastle, we don't want to represent somewhere half between Newcastle and Saudi Arabia, and that's kind of what it's looking like at the minute. It's a strange one because you, you can't ignore the noise, and I think a lot of the, the points that are made you know, are, are something that people should consider. It's the, it's the football club I've supported since the day I was born, uh, and because of that, that's where um, my thoughts lie, is to enjoy the club that I want to go and watch.
we're just there enjoying our club and that's exactly what we go to the games for. It's nothing to do with politics or anything like that. Wouldn't be so naive to say it. it's not sports washing, but there's not a bit of interest obviously in there to grow their businesses. And obviously you can see on my shirt, you know, the sponsor is Seller, that's a Saudi Arabian company. But that's business. You know, football fans, diehard fans, they might not want to admit it old school, but football is a business. We don't have any control. I didn't control Mike Ashley being here and I didn't control the Saudis taking over. So much has changed in two years. The turnaround and the rate of transformation has just been rapid. This is a very precious moment. This is the bit where the team have probably raced ahead of what most fans thought was feasible within a year, within two years. I mean, a year ago, people were saying, we don't demand a team that wins, we want a team that tries. And they're trying, and that's kind of the basis. They've had to work really hard to get what they have. The financial boost that they've had from the takeover has meant investment in the playing squad, and it was much needed. The appointment of Eddie Howe, though, was so key because he is a first-class coach, a brilliant manager, and he's somebody that the supporters have really bought into. I think initially, it Nothing like this was in our thoughts at the speed of which it's happened. The only thing in our thoughts was staying in the Premier League. The swing of momentum has, has shifted um, so powerfully and quickly in a positive direction for us. He's changed the style of play. Yes, he's done it with new players, but he has improved some of the individuals that were there that were struggling before that. The moves they've made have been smart. I think Eddie Howe is clearly someone who who thinks a lot and takes a lot of care with what he does with the sides. And the players we're bringing in as well are players who want to be here who want to play for this club and that, that means so much to the fans. I think it, it shows on the pitch. I think when you look at Newcastle managers, you have Keegan and you have Robson, and then I think you have Eddie Howe, probably in the opinion of the fans as being right up there in the top three. With Man City, they've nailed it, haven't they? With, with Pep, best coach in the world. Rodri and that, the best players in the world, winning the treble. I wouldn't mind a bit of that, to be honest. That's absolutely their ambition. They've gone on record to say it. You know, they've talked about winning things, winning everything, competing for all the big trophies within five to ten years. They're way ahead of schedule, but that's their stated goal. Again, the interesting thing is the way they've gone about it, because the first thing that they were conscious of, of being or not being was another Everton, you know, a team that was taken over, had that sudden influx of money and spent it really badly. There's been FFP restrictions, which are still there, so that's hampered them a bit, but it's been about building in order to get to where they want to be. They're banking, yes, on those financial resources, but also on being smarter than other clubs. They want to be sustainable, so they are trying to grow, but they are not throwing necessarily the money at it that some people thought that they would do and they haven't signed any of the global superstars that when the takeover happened, there was lots of speculation about them going and getting players like Ronaldo, Messi, Neymar. That hasn't happened, and you don't really see it happening either. If we turned around and splashed 200 million on a player, I'm not gonna say no to it, but I do quite like the idea that we are kind of making our moves under the radar and building and growing our own legends, not just buying other people's. I would say give it two or three years, and hopefully we'll have a, a trophy in that cabinet for the first time in about 60. Hopefully Pep or Klopp or both of them leave soon and that opens the door for us. You know, I think when you look at Man United at the minute, Chelsea at the minute, all on the decline. So Newcastle can, can really take advantage of that, I think. This is what I've waited for. This is what I have really been excited for and never really thought it would happen. So yeah, this is definitely our time now. And I think a lot of fans, especially of my generation and younger, I mean, even my dad, he said, he thought he would never see us in the Champions League again. It feels like those days are back, those glory days are back. St James's Park is literally what they call the cathedral on the hill. It's the first thing you see when you get into the city. It's the last thing you see when you leave the city. And because of that, people gravitate towards it. And now we're welcoming the biggest and best players to the stadium. It's, it's unbelievable. And it feels like we're on the cusp of that entertainer's era again. The family are back together and we're all in there and we're all willing for the same cause, which is a well-run football club who tries hard on the pitch, gives it their all, and if we get some success off the back of that, I'll be a happy man.